Welcome to another edition of Need to Know, a series of video interviews with companies who are shaping the games industry of today and of the future. And delighted today to welcome Max Louis from MLC to join me for a quick conversation. How are you doing, Max? Everything all right great. with you? Yes, thank you for having me, Sam. It's great to be here. Well, it's good to connect with you. Haven't, haven't done so in a short while, so lovely to catch up with you. And uh, we'll stay on afterwards and have a bit of a gossip, just uh, have a little chat afterwards, see what's going on. But today, uh, you know, down to business, you're here to have a little need to know conversation around the theme of building bonds and retaining talent, a guide to 98% retention through tribal connectivity in remote teams. Retention is such a hot topic today. Mm. So I'm really delighted that we can have a conversation around this. But first, Max, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? and to MLC are and what you do. Yeah, sure. So um, for the last six years, I've been building MLC. And um, it, uh, it it all started as a um, me, I was doing freelance work uh, in the games industry, just doing video editing and graphics and stuff like that. And I wanted to bring together lots of people. I was actually on Discord a lot. And I wanted to bring together people from around the world who could do skills that I couldn't because there were lots of jobs out there for the games industry and I wanted to be a part of that. So I, st I started putting together some freelancers. Um, we created a bit of a community on Discord. And, um, you know, within a few years, we'd started to realize that actually we were building up a bit of a studio here. And, uh, you know, six years on from the start, um, you know, we worked with hundreds and hundreds of clients. We do outsourcing for game art. It's very specific to game art, but we are now a network of 150 plus freelancers. Mm. And uh, it's everything from like 3D production and 2D production to like, cinematic trailers, um, the whole sort of spectrum of creativity, if you like. And it all started, yeah, just from uh, putting together a few people. So we, we've actually got lots of experience on remote working in particular, even pre-pandemic, which is something I'd love to share with everyone today. Yes, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that, the people with that expertise that the rest of us have tried to catch up with. Right. If, I know MLC is a UK based company, but are the are the individuals you represent and work with all around the world? Yeah, right. So we 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 always wanted to hire talent based on their by, by their skills, not actually where their location is or their pricing and stuff like that. So we've got people in the UK, Europe, North America, South America. Um, we've got a couple in Africa. We've had them in Australia. Australasia as well um so lots and lots of different places and it's yeah like it's 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 just important to us to find talent that um could really make a difference to projects not necessarily you know like the cheapest talent and offshore and that sort of stuff which has uh, been quite common over the past few years as well fabulous well thank you for that introduction let's get into the into the conversation today what are you currently seeing from the market in terms of sort of office and remote based working yeah, so it's it's obviously no secret that um, there are people who love remote working, and there are those who are against it. Um, you know, there are, I've seen lots of comments from. Um, there was actually one recently from the founder of OpenAI saying that remote working is dead. Uh, everyone hmm. is going to be going back to the office. Um, I think you know, as the case with everything, there's a balance, and um, you know, both extreme views are probably not going to be the case. Really, what's going to happen? Uh, I think in the market and what is happening at the moment is people are moving towards the hybrid, right? The remote working plus office. And I think there's um, a really strong argument for hybrid. I personally am a fan of hybrid. That's how I would like to do it. Um, our team is fully remote, so it's a bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot of people who who don't want to return to the office full time for sure. And I think, in fact, Yuki found uh, you you yourselves found that only ten percent of people want to return to the office um, post pandemic, which is a tiny number. Uh, and I'm talking like full time at this moment. Yes, interesting. And I think we'll we'll keep keep up to date with those trends, keep surveying companies and yeah. and, and tracking that as we go. But th there seems to be an acceptance that that remote working is going to be here to stay in some shape or form. So really let's get into the the challenges of, of, of remote working. What are the what are the things that perhaps slow companies down and cause the most difficulties, the challenges of remote working? Yeah, I think um, uh, people are, are put off by remote working, especially in leadership teams, because it can really affect productivity. Um, it can affect uh, happiness levels. You know, people are seeing mental health declining. Um, and there's got to be a question asked that is that potentially due to to remote working and people working it from their homes and not getting social connectivity from being next to somebody in the office. And I think there are definitely arguments for all of those points. Um, so there, there are definitely challenges, you know, the, the productivity element of it as well. If you can't see what somebody's working on as a leader, um, it's really hard to, to measure 
um, you know, the success of someone. And it's, it's, it's also just generally really hard to communicate and collaborate together when you're trying to work on the same project. And games are such a collaborative and creative uh, thing to be working on with people that actually it does feel like you need to be in person um, because there are so many challenges remote working. But we've found over the years that there are lots and lots of techniques and strategies you can use to, to sort of mimic um, what you find from social connectivity when you're when you're actually working in person and uh, it's really just about building on what we know works in the office and building those things virtually um without putting walls in place i'll, I'll get to that in a bit because there's there's a lot there that's fascinating so um well let's let's talk about how to overcome some of those challenges and i think the challenges are, are as, as you've outlined fairly well known but there are there are some additional ones, I guess, that you might you might want to discuss in a second. But let's look at how you can overcome those. You know, what's the sort of and, and then when you're doing that, how do you how do you achieve best practice? Is there such a thing as best practice in remote working? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I think I don't think there's one trick or formula. Um, you know, every team is very different. What their projects are working on are very different. So I think if, uh, you know, as a leader in your team, it's really about adopting a certain mindset. Um, it's not you know, it's thinking about the the, the true problem um, and, and trying to find the, the methods that work for your situation. So I, I actually find that most sort of team related challenges in this regard start at the hiring process. Um, and, and I think this has been where we've been lucky, where we've had a remote team hired prior to it being a necessity. Um, but there are definitely people out there who work better in the office and there are those who work better in remote. And um it's important to identify which members of your team actually can remote work successfully, because it's, you know, you've got to remember that when you are work, remote working at home, it's very comfortable. And that's great because, you know, you're in the comfort of your home, you can just focus and get on with stuff, but at the same time, it's very comfortable. So it's difficult to focus. <laughs> so it's both, you know, that, that same thing that helps is also making it difficult. So you need to have people who are um, self-sufficient, you know, mm. um, and, uh, uh, have a certain level of autonomy, really, um, with the way that they work and, and really have a lot of motivation. But if you can find those people when you're doing your application process in, in the first place, when you're actually hiring people and you're checking what techniques do they have for their own personal remote working, what are their positives and negatives for remote working? Asking these sorts of questions in the interviews really helps to guide you on whether or not that person is going to be successful in that environment. And it's, a, it's an important thing that we do all the time. That's fascinating. I hadn't really thought of it that way. You're you're almost recruiting, taking that as one of the key requirements. Um, it's not necessarily, I suppose companies talk about the ability to work, you know, by themselves or in small groups and lead projects. Those are things that are pretty standard, I guess. But that's fascinating. How do you know if someone is capable of working remotely? Yeah, I suppose you never really know. Um, but likewise, with everything in an interview, it's all about, you know, seeing how they react to the certain uh, questions that you have and, and what mm. ideas and questions and challenges they have themselves that they bring up. And you make your assessment based on that. And you just get this feeling, right? You just know when somebody is going to be productive in the office or you know when they're going to be highly skilled in something. It's likewise, you know, you know when somebody's going to be able to do something in remote working. Um, I mean, I, you don't know, but you feel uh, that, that mm. they may be. Um, but it's important to, you know, keep track of that when they are actually in the team, make sure that they are doing well and enjoying it. And you referenced uh, mental health earlier. Shall we have a, a little deeper dive into that? Because I think you were talking about how when you're working remotely, that might affect negatively your mental health because you're not mixing with people. But then some people are very comfortable, more comfortable at home than they are in a work environment in an office, for instance. It's quite a difficult balance. But how do you overcome those? Let's assume that people are working remotely and there are challenges around mental health. And how can you overcome some of those 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 issues and problems yeah I, I i'm not an expert on mental health so everything i say is of opinion um mm. but um it does feel like a lot of uh, mental health at least the increase in mental health issues that people are facing are coming from uh, there's there's some sort of need that they have in their day-to-day -day life if that isn't being met properly mm. and if it's in remote working it's possible that that is the social connectivity even if somebody is introverted and you know likes to keep to themselves there's still a level of social connectivity um, and purpose i guess a sense of purpose that you're going to want to feel and you and you do get that sense of purpose when you're around other people um even if you're not you know, a heavily social person. So I think this whole idea about social connectivity applies to everyone. 
Um, you know, whether you have mental health issues at the moment or not, or if you're an introvert or extrovert, everyone needs that little bit of social connectivity. And I think that's a possible cause for a lot of these issues that have come up in, in recent years, for sure. Are there practical steps then that you can take, do you think, to help teams be a little bit more united, even if they're working remotely? I don't know. Maybe there's some examples that you do at your company. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the ones that people go to straight away is about organizing social events. Mm. And um, there's lots that we've tried and, and tested with this. And um, for us, I, I, you know, we've we've done things like pizza nights and game nights in the past. We did actually also have this thing called MLC Union, where we'd bring everyone over to the UK and we'd actually meet in person, which was amazing. Um, that really changed things for us as well. But the game nights and these pizza nights that I'm talking about, and like team reward nights and stuff like that, they make such a huge difference to team morale. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to create spaces, right, for people to to be social and, and to talk to each other and, and learn about each other and become friends, ultimately. That's really important that you have that space. It's a, I guess it's workplace design, right? That workplace design that you would apply to the office, apply it to your remote office too. So we do all of our communication through Discord, like I mentioned earlier, mm. and we have lots of different channels in there. And the channels are there designed to get people talking to each other. So there's work channels in there, sure, and people use those all the time. But then we also have like a pet channel, obviously. Um, <laughs> we have a, a channel called Motion, not Notion, because we use Notion for project management. And it's all about getting people moving and out of the house and sharing what they're doing. It could be at a restaurant or whatever, but just showing a bit of real life outside of work is so important, even if you are remote. Um, so yeah, and, and one of the things that we found works really well is, is by trying to create, um, let's call them like culture ambassadors or something like that, where you have certain amount of people who across your company and, it, and you want to have these in all levels everywhere in the company you want to have a few of these culture ambassadors and what these people are doing is trying to encourage social social connectivity social events to happen um because you you don't want to force social on everyone you know you can do that with an event you can say everyone come to a game night it's going to be great and then you'll probably find that your your turnout for that game night isn't really as as expected you have a whole bunch of people who asked for it and then a whole bunch of people who just don't bother coming anyway, even if they did ask for it. Um, and we've the had great, that the great challenge of forced fun. Yeah, I yeah, like forced <laughs> fun, exactly. And and it, it can work, but it isn't. It's it's not sustainable. It's too much work for the company to to mm. try and do that. So having these culture ambassadors, if you like, um, it really helps kind of push that culture, push that social part of the business into into the crowd and try and drum up and what i'm talking about like uh, people who create group chats with the people they get on best with and, and chat outside of work like we have a a team in spain um it just so happens we've kind of got a local cluster in spain in south spain and um we'll talk about local clusters in a bit because they're actually really important but uh, this team actually has their own group chat and they all just talk in spanish to each other and you know there's a lot of like similarities in their culture being spanish together um and that's so powerful so the lead artist actually started that, not MLC. And that's exactly what I'm talking oh, about with these culture people, people who can go out there and do certain things that encourage that to just naturally happen, like, almost mm. like a network effect, right? That's lovely. That's really good advice. And so what about the clusters then? What do you want to tell us about clusters? What was? Yeah, local clusters. Hang on, I've got a note on this. So um, this is something that we're going to be trying fairly soon. Um, we do have a kind of couple of local clusters that naturally happen. There's one in London. Uh, there's actually one in, in Wakefield, Halifax area, and one in South Spain. Um, but I, I think there's, you know, no matter what you do remote, remotely, you know, if you have um, the all these connectivity points and culture points and all that sort of stuff, that's great. And it will really help. But ultimately, when you meet in person, you do get a bit of a fix. And you don't even have to meet in person all the time. It can be you go to an event together like EGX or something like that in London. We've done that a few times to get people together and not on a business perspective. It wasn't about, you know, business development or trying to get clients or something. It was really just to get the team to have a good time, play some games, you know, get in the industry a little bit. Um, and if you have local clusters, it makes it easier to organize these in-person events. So in South Spain and Sevilla, for example, where Andres is, our lead uh, character artist, he can, you know, um, or can organize to have, uh, all the people in the town come together and go out for a meal and MLC could pay for that meal. And, um, you know, it's not really a cost when you consider the the benefit that really comes from having people meet together because they're, they're going to have that sort of tribal connectivity where they're able to understand each other much more freely without having to ask loads of questions and there's less blockages, so much more productive. Lovely. I like the idea of that. 
Yeah, it almost sounds like you should go on tour, don't you think, Max? And go yeah, to these exactly. I thought about yeah. that. Just go around to all the. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look into the future then, if that's all right. What's yeah. the? What do you think is the future of of remote working? Is it here to stay? And what do you think may well change in the future, if anything? Yeah, I, I, it's definitely here to stay. Um, but I don't think it's going to be at the levels we saw post pandemic. Um, at, at some point, it, most of us were working remote entirely. But as things have gone on, we've all kind of found that, um, you know, offices are, have been required again, people are, you know, bosses are asking us to go back to, to the office for one day a week or a couple of days a week or something like that. And I think that's going to continue. I, I, I think that there's a lot of power in the people with this point. If people don't want to go back to the office, then they are going to have a say. People are desperate to retain talent at the moment and anything they can do to, to retain that talent, you know, they're going to do it. So they are listening to employees. Employees mm. have so much power right now. Um, well, those who haven't been laid off, or, or obviously, those who have been laid off, you know, big sorry for them because they've had no power at all of this. Um, but the ones who have managed to, to, to keep their jobs, um, yeah, you know, they do have a say in, in trying to be retained because um, it's such a hot topic. So I think, you know, we will see that this is staying for, for the years to come. And I do think it's going to get better too. Um, I, you know, there are tools like Gather. I don't know if you've heard. You, yeah, of course, you, we've done a, a UK Christmas party Indeed, on Gather yeah, before. Yeah. Um, and that's a great tool. Um, you know, Hot Drop, a company uh, uh, who we're, we're good friends with, a marketing company, they actually told us about Gather using it as, a, as an office, as a virtual office. Mm. And we've been using it for about three months. Absolutely love it. Everyone has their own office and their own desk and we walk into each other and we actually do walk into each other and, and talk randomly, which is something we were missing on Discord. So I think as we find more and more tools like this, like Gather and Discord, um, we will see these things do get better and, and probably stick with the hybrid for, for the foreseeable. Lovely, big advocate of Gather, as you know. Yeah, our Christmas yeah. party was great fun. It was. Actually. Although people were sleeping in the office overnight. We couldn't get rid of them. They stayed all night. <laughs> Too much alcohol, eh? <laughs> well, there was certainly no mess to tidy up. So there was a positive yeah. game out of it. But uh, Max, that's been a fascinating guide into what you've done and what you're seeing in the market around uh, retention and remote working. So thank you very much for giving up your time today. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Check out some of the other need to knows and by all means, get in touch with us and send us feedback and let us know if there's other things that you need to know and we will record those interviews for you. But once again, thanks, Max. No worries. Thank you, Sam. Cheers. See you later. 